Okay, so today I've got my own Mitsubishi 73-inch DLP TV I want to talk about today. And if you notice on the far left-hand side of the picture, it has a shadow. The light tunnel is out of alignment. Now, the best way to see this is to go into the service menu. And the best way to get into the service menu is you've got to have the original Mitsubishi remote control and use the code MENU2457. That'll put it into the uh, adjustment menu and then use the fast forward or rewind buttons while you're in the TV mode to select the test pattern you want to show up here. So let's go to the uh, white test pattern. And if you look on the far left hand, left hand side of the screen, you'll see a shadow. It's about two inches wide on this one. And so we're going to talk about adjusting the light tunnel on this TV today. And hopefully we can get rid of that shadow. Okay, so on this set, we're going to do this in my home today. I'm not going to do it at the shop. I'm going to do it just like everybody on YouTube would do this in their home. So just ignore the background noise. So yes, please ignore the background noise because I have the whole family over here today to help me lift this TV because it does weigh close to 200 pounds. And I'm going to project it up on the ceiling and try to adjust the light tunnel. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my optical engine out of the back of the TV. As you can see, it's sitting on the living room floor. I don't have anything special other than I did jumper the door safety switch, and I did jumper the main exhaust fan. So I've got it sitting here playing, and what I'm going to do is go in the front of it. I'm going to put it in the service mode, and I'm going to project this, the uh, image up onto the ceiling, and I'm going to show you how to adjust the light tunnel. Okay, so kind of hard to see with the light, but right here, there's a little plastic plug. You can pull the plastic plug out and gain access to the adjustment screw for the light tunnel. I wanted to show you where the light tunnel was. If you take the cover off of the color wheel. <laughs> Why is everybody laughing? <laughs> Normally I do this without family around. <laughs> okay, so if you take the, color off the, uh, the cover off the light tunnel, you can see into where the color wheel is. This is what the other video was, and you can see how this one is coated with the aluminum already in there. And I've had this set running for probably almost three years now with no uh, color wheel issues. But hard to see because of the brightness of the lamp with the light tunnels right down in here. One of the adjustments, like I said, the rubber plug comes off here. You can adjust the light tunnel. And I've also uh, removed the cooling fan. Now the lamp's operating without cooling right now, but if you take the engine up, uh, there's another uh, little rubber plug on the bottom down here that you can remove to adjust the vertical portion of the light tunnel. We're not going to be doing that. We're only going to be doing the horizontal adjustment today, but necessary on some sets to adjust the vertical. Uh, let me put the lamp fan back in there so we can continue. Okay, so I've got my optical engine uh, out. It's ready to go. I've got my test pattern projected up on my ceiling. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my screwdriver through the slot. And I'm going to adjust the single screw in there. So let me move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the shadow projected up on the wall right here. That's normally the left hand side of the screen, so I'm going to try to adjust it while you're watching here. And I've got it adjusted so the light tunnel is in alignment now. I can't see any shadow on the left side. But one thing you want to make sure is that you move the engine so you can see the other side of the screen just to make sure that you don't see any shadow on the right hand side of the screen. So I moved my, uh, I took it off the tripod so I can show you both sides of the image here. And up here on this side of the, uh, the uh, ceiling and the wall, my light tunnel is adjusted absolutely perfectly. And you can see the test pattern moving all the way over to this side. And uh, what you want to do is find the balance in between the two uh, extremes on the adjustment screw. And if necessary, you could also adjust the top and the bottom. This one, uh, top and bottom alignment is absolutely perfect, so I don't need to do anything about that whatsoever. But um, let's go ahead and put it back in the set now and uh, watch the results. Okay, so I've got my uh, TV all back together here, and you can see on the left-hand side there is no shadow anymore. Remember, uh, to go into the service menu, it is menu 2457. And then to access the patterns, it's the rewind and fast forward buttons. I chose the rewind only on this one. 
Now to move the image, you can uh, move it up or down. It says horizontal position in the middle of the screen right now. Press the audio, or excuse me, the video button to move to the horizontal or vertical position. And uh, once you get the picture where you like it, vertically and horizontally, just press the enter button that saves it, writes it into the EEPROM at that point. And then you can exit the menu. Another useful feature is menu 2470. That brings up the lamp time in the lower left-hand corner. This one has 15,279 hours on it. And uh, just once again, I uh, appreciate all your views, your comments, your support. I try to answer the questions as much as I possibly can, but I can't answer every single one. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. I appreciate your views with your support. We can keep these things out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Everybody have a great day.